Welcome to Fayetteville Connects, the podcast that brings you closer to the people, places, events, and resources that make our community vibrant and thriving. Whether you're a longtime resident or new to the area, we're here to help keep you informed and connected. I'm your host, Anne Marie Ziegler, and each week we dive into conversations with local leaders, explore exciting happenings, and share valuable insights to enhance your life here in Fayetteville. So thank you for joining us on our journey. Now let's get started, and I'll introduce our guest today to you. It is Mr. Terry Grimble, and after you hear all of this, you will call him Mr. Skate Park. (laughs) So he is the director of the Friends of the Skate Parks Foundation, Um, known as FSF, which is a 501c3, and is dedicated to supporting and developing public skate parks. With a deep passion for skateboarding, Terry has been riding since 1978 and has worked in the skateboard industry since 1988. His journey to skate park advocacy began in 1989 when he spearheaded his first public skate park Park project. Since then, Terry has played a pivotal role in over 30 different skate park projects, helping to create safe and accessible spaces for skaters across the communities. Through FSF, Terry organizes events throughout the Carolinas, including music, food, and skateboard events, all at raising funds for skate park initiatives. His commitment to the skate park community is reflected in his tireless efforts to promote the sport and provide opportunity for skaters of all ages. So, for all of you older people who remember skateboards when they first started out, on up to the ones today, this is going to be exciting information and lots of fun that's going to appeal to everyone. So, let's get started. So, you've been involved with skate parks since 1978? Skateboarding. Skateboarding since 1978, and you've worked on 30 skate park projects. Yes. So, what inspired you to start Friends of the Skate Parks Foundation, and what keeps you motivated with this mission? Well, the uh, Friends of the Skate Parks Foundation... um, it actually was founded in 2013. I had already worked on a bunch of parks prior to that. But um, initially when I got into to wanting to get skate parks built, it was honestly for selfish reasons for me and my friends. Um, I had a place uh, growing up to skate at um, for a couple years between the crucial ages of 15 and 17, 15 or 14 and 16 rather. And uh, our local skate shop here in Fayetteville had built us a skate park. So we got to go skate that every day, and it was our life. And we, you know, we would go compete on the East Coast as amateurs and just had a blast doing it. And we lost that skate park. And, uh, you know, so we're in the streets, and we're getting, you know, kicked out of here, kicked out of there. The cops caught on us just like we were criminals. And the next thing you know... Me and a lot of my friends, we started rebelling and doing stuff we ought not to be doing. And um, luckily for me, I got the job at the skate shop in 1988. And um, soon after that, a lot of my friends started getting in trouble. And I read an article in an industry magazine on how to get your 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 city to build your skate park. And I was like, oh, wow, when we had a skate park, we never got in trouble. So... That's what initially started it. And then two years, that project took four years from start to finish. Two years in, I was ready. I was done. I was like, you know, the, the, the city is really fighting this every which way. And, and, and they want us to raise all this money. And most of my friends are moving or getting, you know, getting out of skating at the time. And so I was ready to give up. But my, my mentor at the time, Carl Legatsky, he was, um, he was helping me with this project, with dealing with the, you know, showing me the ropes of how to mm-hmm. maneuver through the process of getting a, a public skate park built. And uh, he's like, you know, Terry, most 
pioneers. They don't get to enjoy what they set out to do. It's for the next generation. And that was all he said. And it just lit off a light bulb in my head. And and I just stuck with it. And here we are, 30 parks later and many more parks coming. And, and I have helped. I would say thousands of kids um, get through their teenage years having a place to go and focus on the sport they love. Oh, okay. Now you've got the One People Reggae and Arts Festival that's going to be at Festival Park on October 12th. I'm very excited about that. So what can the attendees expect from this event and how does it support your goals? Um, Early on in... uh, when we first started raising money for skate parks, um, we, we was like, hey, let's get our friends' bands to play, garage bands, and, and, you know, they'll play for free. We'll charge $5 at the door, and we'll raise all this money. And that just snowballed into literally hundreds of hundreds of musical events since 1991, uh, mostly around, you know, punk rock music, uh, metal music, but also uh, reggae music and um, um, hip hop music. So we did. We would do a lot of um, stuff that skaters in the culture really like. Uh, music and, and skateboarding kind of go hand in hand. Um, and reggae is, is a staple part of skateboarding culture, along with the punk rock and um, the hip hop. I would say those are the most three most popular, and they're close related in, in music genres. People don't know the history, but there might not have been punk rock the way it was if it wasn't for reggae True. that came first. So um, it was just a perfect storm. And personally, I'm a, I'm a huge reggae fan. It, it is by far my favorite genre of music. And um, um, I've been in some reggae bands and I've worked with the, um, the promoter that I'm working with for the, for the, for the one people's reggae festival. Um, I've worked with him and with festivals in Wilmington and we've done some smaller shows in Fayetteville and, um, he's done shows all over, um, the Carolinas. So, um, finally we, we saw this opportunity to put something together for Fayetteville mm-hmm. Uh, we feel that Fayetteville is a, a, a great market to grow with this event um, versus like some of your bigger cities like or, you know, more where you expect these type of bands to go to like Wilmington or Raleigh or Asheville. Um, those places get these type of shows all the time and Fayetteville rarely does. So we're like, hey, we can start this and grow it from nothing here in Fayetteville. I think there's a huge demand for it. Mm-hmm. And these are um, legendary reggae artists from Jamaica. Very, very popular, very, very professional, incredible shows, incredible dancing and just fun vibes and positive vibes. And it's just really excited about this festival. It's going to be an all-day affair with lots of bands, vendors, food trucks, raffles. Um, yeah, and just the best reggae music on the planet. Okay. So you had mentioned uh, that skate parks are a multi-use facility. So they're not just there for the skateboarders, but what other things can you do? Absolutely. Uh, BMX bike riding, um, trick bike riding, Mm -hmm. and um, scooters. Like kids, they they make specialty scooters for skate parks. Um, Inline skaters, roller skaters. There's even wheel wheelchair motocross or wheelchair yeah they call it motocross i don't know why but (laughs) they ride wheelchairs in the parks they do the airs the flips and everything yeah um i've even seen a unicycle out there in the skate park it's rare but yeah yeah i would say the big three are are bikes scooters big four really skates bikes scooters and skateboards okay so yeah absolutely multi multi multi-use right so you, um, you've got a vision that you had talked with about me, talked with me about um, K through 12th school and college students having their own skate parks. Yeah, I, I think that is the future. And, and you're actually seeing it um, in other states, Colorado, California, um, Utah, where they do have... Um, you can skate for your college in a college competition series. 
um, now. Um, and in Colorado, they have a, a skateboard class you can take in high school. Um, similar to like if you sign up for weightlifting or mm-hmm. some other extracurricular, they have a skateboarding um, class in Colorado. So, so a lot of states are already starting to develop um, this. I just think it's going to go nationwide over the next few decades uh, to the point where you'll be able to skate for your school. You'll be able to get scholarships to go to college. And, you know, it, with skateboarding being in the Olympics now, you, you also see this in China and Japan and other countries where they, they're building entire schools around skate parks where their whole focus is skateboarding skateboarding yes you have your math and your reading and science but skateboarding everything is the whole it's like almost like what do you call it, a charter school like right yeah but it's a charter school for skateboarding so they, they they do have those in other countries and skateboarding is the fastest growing sport in the world um United States has been on top of it for a while, but we are we still don't have enough skate parks, not even close to where the U- U.S. should have. Oh, okay. So, like everything else, we know that skate parks take a lot of funding. So, can you talk about the importance of community support and funding and what opportunities you have to get some funds and how? Yeah, absolutely. Um, with, with skateboarding being um, a unique sport and an up-and-coming sport compared to your traditional sports like baseball and basketball and soccer and, and sports like that, um, is that there's uh, uh, they're just starting to get into um, the parks and recs um, uh I don't know how what I'm trying to say with that. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, it's uh, there. Okay, so so there's not there's not a lot of organization. You know how you can sign up for little league baseball with your mm-hmm. Parks and Rec league. Mm-hmm. There's there's just there's not a lot of that organization going on at this point. But I think it's coming where you will where you'll see more schools and parks and rec getting into it. And, uh, and, and then that's the big thing is to getting the, the, the parks and rec and the, and the governments um, to allocate funds towards it as well. Like we could fundraise, but you're only gonna fundraise so much that the, the, the governments have to put in um, their fair share as well. Um, there's also grant writing, uh, which is a big part of it. Um, and then uh, just the grassroots effort from the from the uh, citizens, from the people, the parents and the and the kids who skate, and the people who want to see these type of facilities built in their communities, um, those grassroots efforts are are what makes that get the attention of the parks and rec and the governments and things to to want to to satisfy what their citizens are doing. If if we weren't out there advocating and throwing fundraisers and getting publicity and raising money and putting our, our money where our mouth is, then it, you know, it just shows a lot of effort. And, um, so it's very important that, that, that people do get behind, uh, what we're doing and get involved. And it's, it's just, it's great. Um, it's a great marketing tool for companies as well. Um, Skateboarding and BMX riding are, are two of the most influential and most sought after activities that, that major advertisers look to connect with because they know how much influence um, this these sports have over people's buying decisions. So um, you're seeing a lot of like uh, big time endorsements. It's skateboarding's mainstream and. There's a lot of people trying to crack it and, mm-hmm. and, and supporting skate park um, efforts is definitely a good way to uh, to relate your your company's message with with the community as doing something good and looking cool and them wanting to support you because you're supporting what they're doing. I can see where it would be um, from a marketing standpoint. Yes, you're getting in front of the ki- parents of the kids and you know 
with me, my kids when they were growing up, my grandkids. Oh, well, this company helped. Yeah, I'm going to be doing stuff with them. And then also you've got this next generation coming up that, you know, if they can look back and say skateboarding changed my life and we couldn't have done it if it hadn't been for this company or that company. That's right. And I think more companies need to look at ways that they can support the next generation and, you know, reach out to them. Absolutely. And, you know, it's just that the fact that it's growing so fast and it's just a good way to uh, it's a good way to give back to your community. You know, skate parks, um, it's not just a a marketing tool. It really benefits the community. Um, It's been proven that if you build a proper skate park, you fund it properly, you locate it properly, property values go up in the entire community. Crime goes down Mm -hmm. in the entire community. Property values up, crime down, tourism up. I mean, it's it's a win win win. Whether you use the park or not, your your community's safer with a nice skate park, right? And more valuable. And I think that would be another drawing point for all these large industries and companies that economic development is trying to bring in here. Because I know that's one of their big things. We've got to have stuff that's going to draw the attention i've always heard it it's been a struggle keeping our young kids in fayetteville Mm -hmm. once they go to college they don't come back and i remember decades ago the city hired a consultant how do we revive downtown to get people go back downtown and they gave this guy tens of thousands of dollars i don't know it was ridiculous amount of money and his solution was if you want people to go downtown you need to put a beach down there and I thought that was the most insulting thing I ever heard. But I'm like, well, hey, skate park is the next best thing to a beach because it's just concrete waves yes, everywhere. Yes. <laughs> All right. So since you do a lot of events and work on skate parks in the Carolinas, I know there's some beach music somewhere in there. And Myrtle Beach is famous for all their beach music. So what's going on at Myrtle Beach? Uh, Myrtle Beach, um, yeah, I, I, I have worked on a skate park project there, um, and I and I actually have a skate shop in Myrtle Beach, and um, so I just drove in from Myrtle Beach this morning from that shop to to do this. But anyway, Myrtle, I love Myrtle Beach. Mm-hmm. I love spending time there. I love the skate um, community there. Uh, my store has been there seven years, and as soon as I got there, we started working on their skate park project. Uh, I've raised over $200,000 for that park, and we just finished phase two this past February. And um, it's great. And now we got a national um, skateboard contest and festival we do every year. Um, It's coming up September 27th and 28th in Myrtle Beach at the Matt Hughes Skate Park, and we'll have skaters from all over the country even canada and puerto rico and florida new york and california will come these are the best amateur skateboarders in the country um and they'll be competing for five thousand dollars in cash wow yep and uh, we'll have food trucks and vendors and raffles and it's just going to be a great weekend in myrtle beach um beach music um not very popular with skateboarders, no. but my family loves it. And I do have a, one of my best friends was a, a champion shag dancer down in Myrtle Beach that I grew up skateboarding with, yeah. which I thought was pretty crazy because he's the <laughs> only skateboarder I knew that would shag. shag yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you still got the music and the concerts and the opportunities to get together and have fun at the beach. That's right. And so uh, I kind of see a business trip around that time yeah so uh, i'll go ahead and let my accountant know that it's, it's all business I got that you weekend a, i got you a ticket <laughs> okay <laughs> all right so give us some details on the reggae festival we're going to go back since we're here at local sure. and talk some more about that yeah october 12th this is saturday gates are going to open at one o'clock we're going to go to at least 10 maybe ten thirty. Uh, we, uh, we haven't announced the official lineup yet. Uh, we do know that Inner Circle is going to be one of our headliners. And if you're not familiar with Inner Circle, 
They are the bad boys of reggae. All right. They uh, had the huge mega hit song that was the Cops TV show theme song. Oh, yeah. So they're and they have a bunch of other hits. They are legendary. I knew about them way before the the Cops show ever came out. Uh, Jacob Miller was uh, one of their original lead singers. He tragically died um, a while back when the band carried on. But he um, he was such a, a, a unique um, voice in reggae, and the band was just amazing, and they're still amazing. Actually, um, got to share a stage with them about five years ago when I was uh, playing with one of the bands I was playing with, and um, it was just an incredible experience to be around such legends. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a lot more uh, great artists lined up. I don't really want to say right now until we make the official right. announcement, but um, really great music, uh, really great food trucks are already being booked. Uh, we've got some really great artists that are already doing uh, booking vendors. We're going to have a VIP section. Um, and... Uh, we're just expecting to have a really great time and 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 dance and and bring authentic and 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 legendary reggae to Fayetteville. It's, it's so rare. I can't even think of when that's ever happened. Yeah, I, I don't know, but I think it's great. Now you got one more other event that's close by that people can easily drive to, and it's a wing cook-off. It is. It's it'll be our second annual lip ripping. <laughs> Chicken wing cook-off. All right. Yeah. Um, we did it last year. It's in Southern Pines. It's a fundraiser for that project there. And last year, um, we had 3,000 people show up. We sold 6,000 chicken wings. We had about 70 vendors. We had food trucks. We had a skate demo. We had bands all day. We had celebrity judges. And we raised about $22,000 that day yeah. for wow. the skate park. So hopefully we can top that this year and get it. We had a really beautiful day last year. It was like 72 degrees, oh. blue skies. <laughs> so we're just praying and for that blessing again. <laughs> well, just a, a little side note. I have been a chicken wing judge uh, two or three times before. So. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, well, we'll sign you up. We'll put you in. I got you a ticket to Myrtle Beach, and I got you as a judge in the chicken wing. All right. <laughs> um, and don't forget the reggae. Oh, yeah. I am got you so there. excited about that one. Um, that's really what got my attention to reach out to you when I saw the information about that. And I was like, oh, wow, I don't think we've ever done anything like that. And skateboarding, I have two sons, and uh, they – cracked themselves or well their skateboards they didn't really get hurt um <laughs> several times when they were younger mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so um matter of fact i think i was just going through storage the other day and i saw one of their old skateboards nice <laughs> so, hey it might be worth some money now uh, depending on how old it is it, it didn't look too good <laughs> it don't matter some of these beat up things would get more than you think uh, well, if it's from the 80s uh yes. Oh, it might it might be okay. it might be valuable. There's a collector's market out there. Oh. If it's a particular board that somebody wants in their collection, mm -hmm. they'll drop serious money for it. You know, you should bring it by. And let me look at it. All I'll right. tell you. All right. <laughs> now, so for our listeners, as we're wrapping things up, um, who are passionate also about the skateboard community and the development, how can they best support FSU? S F S F <laughs> Friends of the Skate Park. <laughs> yes. Foundation. Uh, well, we uh, obviously we we're we're gonna we're gonna need volunteers in Myrtle Beach and at Festival Park in Fayetteville and in Southern Pine. So anyone wanting to volunteer, please hit us up, send us a message, we'll get you plugged in. All three events are, are gonna be worth it, even if you have to travel to go and, and okay. help out. They're gonna be a lot of fun. Personally, I would rather go to an event and be involved with the production yeah. of it than just to go and be a spectator. But, you know, to each his own. Yes. And uh, so volunteers, but, we're, you know, we're, we're looking for more vendors. Or, uh, we're looking for more sponsors for these events. Um, we're just getting started with getting the word out about the chicken wing. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a lot of sponsors for... Uh, 
the reggae fest already in the Myrtle Beach. Um, we still uh, have room, though, for more. So especially the reggae festival, um, we still we got a lot of we got some room for vendors and more sponsors. And so, yeah, uh, just hit us up on 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 Facebook or okay. our website or email. And yeah, we'll we'll plug you in. We need the All help. Right. OK, <laughs> sounds good. I'm so glad that we were able to have you on today and find out about all this exciting stuff with skateboarders and uh, all the events that you're having in our area. And so far, none of the places are that far. I mean, it's like, oh, yeah, I'll do a trip down to Myrtle Beach. Or, mm-hmm. oh, let me, I know a lot of people that go over to Southern Pines and Pinehurst for dinner. Yeah. So, you know, it's good location. We're centrally located and can support our own right here at home as well. That's right. Well, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you again. All right. Well, thanks for having me. This has been a pleasure. Well, thank you. Okay. Thank you for turning into tuning into this week's episode of Fayetteville Connects with Terry Grimble, Mr. Skateboard. We want to give a huge shout-out to Vic Frost at Deep Freeze Productions because without his magic... This would not even be happening, so you do need to check him out because you see that our stuff is truly amazing. We've enjoyed the conversation, found it very insightful, so stay connected with us by going to our website, ArrayNC.com. You can watch the Fayetteville Connects podcast there as well on other social media platforms, and you can go to our website and sign up for our newsletter and see what all's happening. So if you have uh, suggestions, if you have comments or topics you would like for us to cover, just send us a message from our website, ArrayNC.com, and we will get back with you shortly. So until next time, stay connected to see all that Fable has to offer. Goodbye until next week.